In this video I will explain the quasi-maximum likelihood estimation or the basic principle. The term sounds a bit complicated but the idea here is very simple and the idea has some very powerful implications that you need to understand. Let's take a look at the Bernoulli distribution. So here we have uh, some observations. The dependent variable is, is ones and zeros. We have uh, a model here, some pr uh, predictors and some link function that give predictive probabilities between one and zero. And uh, then we calculate the likelihood using this kind of equation. So if uh, the predictive probability is, uh, or the observed value is one, then the likelihood is the predictive probability. If the observed value is zero, then the likelihood is one minus the predictive probability. So if we predict uh, 0 0.1, then our probability, then it's uh, much more likely to get the zero than one. So it's 90% it's likelihood. The computer, when it calculates these likelihoods, doesn't actually use this kind of if construction here. Instead, it, looks, it uses this kind of uh, function. So the idea is that we uh, take the independent dependent variable, we multiply the, uh, the predictive probability, and then we take one minus the dependent variable, we multiply one minus the predictive probability. The idea being that if uh, the dependent variable is one, this receives zero. So we only take the probability. If the dependent variable is, is zero, this receives one, and we only take the one minus the probability into the, into the likelihood. The key insight in quasi-maximum likelihood estimation is that this equation actually works even if the dependent variable is not ones and zeros only. So we can calculate the result for observed values of 0 0.1, and 0 0.4, for example. These are not proper likelihoods, but the estimates that maximizing this, the product of these likelihoods gives are actually consistent very generally. So this is a really nice idea. It's called quasi-maximum likelihood estimation. The features of quasi-maximum likelihood estimation are that certain important estimators, like Bernoulli quasi-maximum likelihood, which is between 0 and 1, dependent variable and Poisson quasi-maximum likelihood estimation which has an exponential model for the dependent uh, for the predict predicted value of the dependent variable are consistent generally regardless of the distribution of the dependent variable. So this is the same thing that you have in, in least squares regression analysis. The least squares regression analysis provides consistent estimates for the linear model regardless of how our dependent variable is distributed. That's the reason why when we have a, a linear model, we always start with least square regression analysis. We could have a bit more efficient uh, estimates by using weighted least squares and, and so on. The same here, the Bernoulli quasi-maximum likelihood, it's consistent. There could be some like beta regression analysis for fractions that is more efficient, but then beta regression analysis would be inconsistent unless the distribution for the dependent variables is uh, correctly specified. There are two important limitations for these quasi-maximum likelihood estimates, which is basically just applying Poisson regression to variables that are non-counts or uh, logistic regression analysis uh, applied to variables that are not ones and zeros only, but can also take values between one and zero. There are the problems are that they are, the standard errors will be inconsistent if you do it that way. The uh, upside here is that we can always use robust standard errors which will be consistent. They are less efficient but they will be consistent. Another downside is that we can't use the likelihood ratio test for model comparisons. So, uh, but this is very useful because it, it gives us some very robust analysis techniques. If we have a sm large sample size, then our estimates, is going, estimates are going to be precise no matter what. So efficiency is not as important. And if we want to have robust sets of estimates, then instead of trying to figure out whether the dependent variables is negative binomial or whether it's Poisson or whether it's something else, you can just apply Poisson regression analysis and trust that the results are actually consistent. This has been applied uh, in the, in, the, in the literature. But um, before I go into that, there is this nice quote from Nichols' presentation in Stata Conference 2010. And uh, he points out that not many people know that you can apply Poisson regression analysis for known count variables. 
and then there's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, statement in the end of his presentation that uh, if you apply Poisson quasi-maximum likelihood estimation, uh, maybe you should call it GLM with a log link instead of Poisson quasi-maximum likelihood estimation because otherwise your reverse may tell you that you can't use Poisson for non-counts, which you just did in your paper. This, these techniques are becoming more common and uh, this is something of, of a new idea. But here's an example. So we can see that uh, in this paper 2016, uh, they say that they use quasi-maximum likelihood QML Poisson regression analysis. And they explain that uh, you can use it even if the dependent variables count and there is no problem with that. And they cite a paper 1984 that uh, provides a proof that that's actually the case. So this is a pretty good explanation and that you can use as an example of how do you convince your reviewers that are using a quasi-maximum likelihood estimator is a good idea.